Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and could not go back to sleep? You might have experienced that moment when you were deeply asleep, but suddenly you jolted awake wondering what on earth could have happened to you. Many people like you and I have always wondered why this happens. For some, it happens once in a while. For others, this experience is more frequent. Why do you wake up in the middle of the night? In this video, I will explain why you wake up in the middle of the night, especially around 3 a.m. Before I delve deeply into why God wakes you up at night, it is important to stress that God our Father understands times and seasons. God is not just all-knowing. He is also a time-conscious Father. The Bible says that there is a time and season to everything under the sun. There is a time to sow and a time to reap. There is a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. God has systematically scheduled our lives into times and seasons for His purposes. Our lives are in His hands, and everything we do can be traced to the time we spend on this earth. Are you aware that nothing happens by chance? You see, on this earth, nothing happens by chance. Wealth, success, and prosperity do not just happen. They are influenced by spiritual forces. Likewise, when you wake up during the night, there's usually something significant about it. Number one. One of the reasons why God wakes you up in the night might be that God wants you to develop the discipline of consistency in your prayer life. Prayer is one aspect of the Christian life that is vital for our walk with the Lord and assures us of a life of victory here on earth. However, many believers still struggle with consistency in prayer. As the years go by, they have not gained consistency in their prayer time. At the slightest distraction, they are quickly off their prayer schedule. Over time, they become unconcerned about the quality of time spent in prayer. When Satan cannot stop you from praying, he introduces inconsistency to your prayer schedule. This is one weapon Satan has used to trap many children of God. If not properly managed, this inconsistency can develop into a lackadaisical attitude towards prayer. His goal to make you prayerless is then achieved. The moment we place our faith in Jesus, we were given His victory immediately. Nevertheless, spiritual forces exist who are contending for this life of victory, so they will want to pray on our weak areas. One of these weaknesses is inconsistency in our prayer schedule. It is crucial you know that we can pray to God at all times. However, God honors those who consistently have a constant prayer schedule. We can confirm this through the lives of people like Daniel and even Jesus Christ. It takes more than discipline to attain this. It is a dimension of the spirit of excellence. Am I saying that if you don't pray at certain times, God will not hear you? No, certainly not. The primary requirement for answered prayer is faith in God's ability. Jesus told the disciples that if you have faith, you can say to this mountain, be moved and cast into the sea and it will obey. But prayer develops our confidence. Hence, Satan introduces inconsistency to weaken our prayer and thereby our faith. So, if our prayer is weakened, our faith is weakened too. I want you to please understand that I'm not in any way suggesting God is limited to a specific time. Rather, the spiritual experience of waking up at night can happen at any time. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where his windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Number two, another reason God wakes you up at night might be that God is trying to sharpen your discernment. Discernment is one tool the Holy Spirit gives us as his children to make our sensitivity and spiritual intelligence more accurate. We live in a world characterized by a thousand distractions, from our phones to our friends, families, and social gatherings. In all these, God desires that His children will have their discernment intact. As Christians, we must learn to discern the movements of the Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day activities. When you are awake in the middle of the night, it is time to pray and seek God's direction earnestly. It's not the time to endlessly search for information or social media. 
There is a spiritual purpose for everything we experience in our physical reality. In the early morning hours, when the silence is loudest, God loves to communicate and share essential secrets that can be a blessing to you and your family, friends, colleagues, or people around you like your neighbors. It is safe to say that feigning ignorance to this midnight experience can hinder your ability to fulfill God's mandate for your life and destiny. So, the next time you wake up in the night, my dear friend, it is a sign that God is something vital for you to do. Our discernment grows when we establish deep and intimate fellowship with the Lord in prayer. God uses this method so that He can communicate and show you things in the quietness of the night. The next time you wake up, rather than going back to sleep, engage the Lord in prayer. Speak to Him and ask Him why He allowed you to be awake at such a time. Ask Him who He would have you praying for. Ask Him what He would have you pray about. He may want you to pray for a believer or an unbeliever, but most importantly, engage him in prayer. Through this, your discernment is being polished. Have you ever wondered why most occult and witchcraft groups meet at night? Sometimes when God permits you to wake up from your sleep at this specific time, it is to use your prayer to wage war against Satan's kingdom. Satan always works hard to hinder the progress of God's children. Still, through your prayer, his strategies are always defeated. Anytime God wakes you up at such moments, it is to thwart the devil's strategies. Number three. Thirdly, when you wake up at night, God may want you to acknowledge his power in deep adoration of his name. Worshiping God in the middle of the night has a profound way of connecting us with him. Have you considered what it feels like when you are alone for the audience of one? where you have the privilege to minister to Him and feel the deep connection between you and Him as your spirit connects to your wellspring. The night is the most favorable time for intimate conversations with someone you genuinely love. It's an invitation for a conversation with our Father. Do not hesitate to respond to God's call when you find yourself awake at night. Jesus, our perfect example, showed us this pattern to follow. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Jesus always had an intimate encounter with his heavenly Father in the quietness and solitude of the morning watches. This shows the importance of seeking God in the morning. I want you to know that it is not a question of the literal time. It's much more about your heart's intention whether it is 3, 2, or 1 in the morning, whether you are in your prayer closet or a quiet corner, ensure you open your heart to God. Early morning prayers are potent and effective as they provide us with the opportunity and privilege to connect our hearts to the Lord, to pour out our concerns, fears, dreams, and plans to Him, and to listen to His calm, still voice, which brings peace, hope, love, joy, and comfort to your soul. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for what you have done in our lives. We want to tell you how grateful we are and that we do not take you for granted. Thank you for the revelation of your word and the privilege to be known and called by you, Lord. We thank you also for opening our eyes to the understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus, giving us confidence that we have everything in you and that your love matters most to us. We know we are more than conquerors through Christ, who loved us and gave himself up for us. Dear Lord, we pray for the grace to seek you early every morning. We ask that you help us overcome everything challenging our fellowship and profound intimacy with you. We ask in the name of Jesus that you help us develop a life of discipline and discernment in our daily prayer schedule. Please grant us the determination to pray and worship in the early hours and make us see that when you wake us up, you indeed desire fellowship and intimacy with us and will answer us because of your faithfulness. Dear Jesus, we come before you again to seek your intervention in our lives. Many of us have become weary and there are thoughts of giving up on you in this journey of faith. Lord, thank you for seeing our hearts and knowing our thoughts. We know that any time we are in the corridors of fear and despair, 
Your love will pull us out of danger and make us stand stronger in you. We recognize and acknowledge our emotional challenges and know fully that we cannot do this without you. We trust in your faithfulness to help us, Lord. Please change us from within and without. Send us deliverance from the power of addiction, be it drunkenness, pornography, masturbation, or drugs. We pray that you take absolute control of our spirits, for we are tired of the way we live our lives. Please strengthen and equip us with your truth in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for those suffering from any form of sickness, those who have been held bound by the power of infirmity. We sincerely ask for your divine healing in their bodies. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit to heal in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Jesus, we also pray for those seeking financial breakthroughs in their lives. We ask that you supply every financial need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let their needs be swallowed up by your sufficiency. Precious Lord, come before you today with hearts overflowing with gratitude and praise for who you are and all you represent in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power upon us, our families and our colleagues. Thank you for fighting our unseen battles and making us victorious in everything. We thank you for your peace, our Prince of Peace. We thank you for your faithfulness that lasts from one generation to another. We thank you for your ever abiding presence in our lives, always guiding and protecting us from the enemy. Our Savior and Redeemer, we thank you for the precious gift of salvation to each of us. We also are grateful for the forgiveness of our sins through your precious blood, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love that endures forever. We thank you for the gift of eternal life at work in us, and we are confident that when we see you, we will be like you and live in your presence forever. We pray and make all these requests knowing you will hear us. We are confident you will answer us because we have prayed in your will. Blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto your name. Amen. When Jesus bid farewell to his disciples following his resurrection, he pledged to intercede with God to send them a comforter in the form of the Holy Spirit, a promise fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Yet this promise extends far beyond the disciples alone. Every child of God is entitled to this divine blessing. Certainly, possessing the Holy Spirit imbues a Christian with blessings beyond measure, transcending mere fluency in tongues. Remember the remarkable transformation, power, wisdom, and confidence that enveloped the disciples upon receiving the Spirit? Regrettably, many contemporary Christians remain distant from such experiences, mistakenly equating the ability to speak in tongues with genuine spiritual transformation. As 2 Timothy 3 aptly states, many exhibit a form of godliness while lacking its true power. In these times, with various spirits at play, discerning the genuine presence of the Holy Spirit becomes paramount. Just as the Bible warns that the devil can masquerade as an angel of light, many within the church today may unknowingly operate under a counterfeit spirit. Distinguishing those genuinely filled with the Holy Spirit requires no prolonged fasting or fervent prayer. Throughout history, a consistent pattern emerges in the lives of those truly infused with the Spirit of God, a set of distinct habits that serve as hallmarks of their spiritual journey. Before we proceed further, I urge you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and commit to watching till the end. This message carries profound significance that stands to transform your spiritual walk. So what are these habits that characterize a person genuinely filled with the Holy Spirit? Let's explore the transformative practices that define those in tune with the divine. Number one. The Holy Spirit's presence in your life is unmistakable. It's like a secret ingredient that transforms you from the inside out. You see, when the Holy Spirit dwells within you, something remarkable happens. You start bearing fruits, not just any fruits, but the kind that reflect the very nature of God Himself. It's like a spiritual makeover, guided by Galatians 5, 22-23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Which lays out the blueprint, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These aren't just fancy words. They're the building blocks of a life lived in harmony with God's will. Take love, for example. When the Holy Spirit takes residence in your heart, love becomes your default mode. It's not just a fleeting emotion. It's a way of life. You start seeing people through God's eyes with compassion and empathy, regardless of who they are or what they believe. Your love isn't selective. It's all-encompassing, reaching out to everyone in need. And as you walk in love, you become a beacon of hope in a world filled with darkness. Then there's faith, the kind that moves mountains. It's not about wishful thinking. It's about trusting in God's promises, even when everything around you screams doubt. With the Holy Spirit as your guide, you can weather any storm with unwavering confidence, knowing that God is in control. This faith isn't blind. It's rooted in the unshakable truth of God's Word. And let's not forget about peace and joy. In a world plagued by chaos and uncertainty, the peace that surpasses all understanding becomes your constant companion. It's a peace that anchors your soul, regardless of the storms raging around you. And with peace comes joy, not the fleeting kind that depends on circumstances, but the deep, abiding joy that comes from knowing Christ. If you're not experiencing these fruits in your life, maybe it's time to reevaluate your relationship with God. You see, the Holy Spirit isn't just a distant presence. He's a constant companion, waiting to be invited into every area of your life. And the key to unlocking His power? Prayer. It's not just a religious ritual. It's a lifeline. A line of direct communication with the Creator of the universe. Number 2. A burning hunger for God's Word and His presence, paired with constant prayer, is non-negotiable. It's impossible to claim fellowship with the Holy Spirit if you can't recall the last heartfelt conversation you had with Him. And let me caution you, if someone professes to possess the Holy Spirit but lacks a steady commitment to studying God's Word and prayer, exercise caution. When the Holy Spirit dwells within you, He ignites a passion to dive deep into Scripture. Remember when Jesus spoke to His disciples about the Holy Spirit? He promised that the Spirit would be their teacher in all things. This means the Holy Spirit enriches your understanding of God's Word. He unveils profound truths hidden within the Scriptures, enriching your knowledge of God's Word with each passing day. Moreover, the Holy Spirit bolsters your prayer life, reminding you of the vital importance of communion with God. In Romans 8, 26, the Apostle Paul affirms this truth, stating, The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. The Holy Spirit grants you sensitivity to God's leading, guiding you to seek wisdom and understanding through fervent prayer. The Word of God isn't just a religious obligation for those attuned to the Holy Spirit. It's their lifeline to divine wisdom and guidance. Through diligent study and meditation on God's Word, they gain insights that illuminate their path, equipping them to navigate life's complexities with grace and discernment. Number 3. Acts of Compassion When the Holy Spirit resides within someone, it's like a light shining through their actions. You see, they naturally tend towards compassion, kindness, and selflessness. It's not forced or contrived. It flows from them effortlessly. Think about it. Extending a helping hand, lending a listening ear. These aren't just gestures. They're reflections of divine love and motion. Their deeds, fueled by this love, carry a power that transforms lives, infusing hope into a world that's craving genuine connections. It's like they're walking embodiments of God's love, leaving a trail of positivity and kindness wherever they go. And that, my friends, is the mark of someone who's truly touched by the Holy Spirit. They don't just talk the talk, they walk it, radiating love and compassion without even realizing it. That's the kind of presence that leaves an imprint on hearts and souls, a presence that speaks volumes. Number 4. Triumph Over Sin 
Living in sin ensnares a person, binding them in chains of bondage. The Apostle Paul, sharing wisdom in the Bible, emphasizes that whatever holds sway over you controls you. It robs you of what truly matters. Paul further explains that obedience dictates your allegiance, whether to sin or righteousness. This is a defining characteristic of those filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers believers to conquer the grips of sin, enabling them to withstand temptation and the world's seductions. Without this empowerment, one becomes vulnerable to the wiles of the devil. Those infused with the Holy Spirit possess a heightened sensitivity to righteousness, nurturing a deep desire to walk in God's ways and honor His commands. They discern the abundance of blessings, fostering a spirit of gratitude amidst all circumstances. Even amidst trials, they find cause for joy, recognizing that each experience is an avenue for growth and divine intervention. Number 4. Victory Over Sin You know living in sin is like being trapped. The great Apostle Paul, he talked about this in the Bible. He said, whatever holds you, whatever grips you, it becomes your master. And let me tell you, it steals away the things that truly matter. He went on to say, what you obey, that's your master, whether it's sin or doing what's right. See, here's the thing that sets someone with the Holy Spirit apart from someone who's just empty inside. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to conquer sin. You can boldly say, I'm not a slave to sin anymore. But that's because the Holy Spirit helps you to say no to temptation, to turn away from all the flashy empty promises this world offers. Otherwise, you're just prey to the devil's schemes. People filled with the Holy Spirit can sense what's right, and they have this deep desire to walk hand in hand with God, to follow His lead. They see the blessings all around them, even in tough times, and they're grateful for every bit of it. They find joy even in the midst of struggles, because they know that every experience, good or bad, is a chance to grow, to experience something divine. So let me tell you, Having the Holy Spirit, it's not just some idea. It's a game changer, a life transformer. It's the difference between being stuck in the same old cycle of sin and stepping into a life of freedom and purpose. Let's talk about the fifth habit, having the boldness to share the message of peace. Picture this, Peter, once timid and fearful, now stands tall among his peers, fearlessly proclaiming the truth. Remember that pivotal moment on Pentecost? The Holy Spirit descended, transforming not just their hearts, but their very words. It's like a light switched on inside them, illuminating mysteries previously hidden. Jesus himself said they'd spread his message far and wide, and that's exactly what they did. Peter, who once had faltered in fear, now leads with courage. That's the power of the Holy Spirit, empowering ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Ephesians 1 7 says he or she has been redeemed or their sins were forgiven. Ephesians 1 13 tells us that new believers are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1 13. Moving on to faith, the cornerstone of our journey. It's about trusting in something bigger than ourselves. Even when the road ahead seems uncertain. Those led by the Spirit walk in faith, witnessing miracles unfold as prayers are answered and obstacles crumble. Their lives become living proof of God's power at work. Now, let's talk humility, a virtue often overlooked in today's world of self-promotion. But those filled with the Holy Spirit understand the true essence of greatness. It's not about chasing fame or fortune. It's about serving others with humility and obedience. They relinquish their own desires, allowing the Spirit to guide them towards righteousness and selflessness. Boldness, faith, and humility. Three key habits of those walking with the Holy Spirit. It's not about flashy words or grand gestures. It's about living with purpose and conviction, letting the Spirit lead the way. Number six. You see, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, it's like being equipped with superpowers. But instead of saving the world, these gifts empower you to serve God and help others find their way to Him. 
The Bible puts it this way in 1 Corinthians 12, 4-7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them for the common good. So, whether it's the gift of prophecy, healing, teaching, or discernment, these abilities aren't just for show. They're meant to be put into action, to make a real difference in the lives of those around you. But remember, they're not for your own glory. They're for lifting up the body of Christ and showing the world the greatness of God. So let's keep the Holy Spirit active in our lives, not just for our sake, but for the sake of everyone around us. Now, I want to hear from you. What's one way you've seen the Holy Spirit at work in your life or in the lives of others? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights like this. What if your daily success was as easy as starting each day by seeking God's direction? The idea of seeking God's direction every morning is wonderfully simple yet deeply meaningful. It has a deliberate intention to seek guidance and wisdom from God. Please understand that this simple practice encourages us to make turning to God for help a daily habit and helps us to have a clear sense of purpose for living each day. It's founded on the belief that God can give us direction and the strength required to successfully handle the various challenges and decisions that life presents us with. So, in essence, it's like having a reliable compass to steer you through life's journey, providing you with a sense of reassurance and direction for each day. Now, let us explore some scriptures that will help us to better understand seeking God's direction every morning. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-6, through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. This passage advises us to completely trust the Lord and not rely solely on our own understanding. Consider this message as the Spirit of the Lord speaking to your heart and encouraging you to acknowledge Him in all aspects of your life and submit to His guidance. God is promising that when you let Him take the lead and guide you, he will make your paths straight. What this means is that not only is He going to show you where to go, but He will give you a clear understanding of the path. Then He will go with you to give you victory along the way so that you can arrive at your destination safely. Isn't that just amazing? Seeking God's direction every morning aligns with God's will as expressed all through Scripture. He is always near those who seek Him with all their hearts. The psalmist writes in Psalm 143, verse 8, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. This verse expresses the desire for God's guidance in the morning. It speaks of starting the day by seeking a message of God's unfailing love and entrusting one's life to Him. The psalmist asks God to show him how he should go explaining the importance of beginning each day to seek guidance, direction, and divine direction and trust in God's wisdom. Incorporating these scriptures into our daily lives means consciously starting each morning by praying, reflecting, and seeking God's guidance. It involves trusting that God will lead you on the right path. We acknowledge our dependence on God and invite His wisdom and direction into our daily decisions and actions. Seeking God's guidance at the start of each day can lead to a life guided by His wisdom and purpose. Imagine living a life that's wholly guided and patterned by divinity. The chances of making mistakes or falling by the wayside are zero. Aren't you wowed? Well, I am. Because the Bible mentions in Psalm chapter 23, verse 3, He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths, as He has promised. He has already promised all that is left for me is to allow Him to guide me, not just once, but every day of my life. Remember that this is a daily thing. Why? Because yesterday's faith cannot solve today's problems. Faith is renewed daily, keeping you in step with the solution provider. So, leaning on God yesterday may not help you today, but you have to continue relying on Him today and every other day. Remember, you must depend on God daily because you have weaknesses. You have limitations, you have fears, you have needs. Without divine intervention, there is only so much you can do. But with God on your side, there is no limit to what you can experience. So, 
When you start your day with God, seeking guidance daily, your life will take a new turn and never be the same. Today, God's reassuring voice says, but seek first the kingdom of God. But why is it so important to seek God's direction each day, especially at the beginning of the day? God's love and guidance are like a steady compass, always pointing you in the right direction. Think about navigating through the desert or the sea without a compass. A map is useless when you can't tell where you are. But thank God you can know where you are because the one who holds the whole world in his hands will sail with you. With him on your boat, you can never be stranded. And even when you seem lost, he can make a way through the wilderness. That's the Lord God, your heavenly Father. Whatever tries to take the lead in your life is anti-God and out to destroy you. You see, God didn't place you on earth to try to figure everything out by yourself. He put you here to trust Him and to work with Him side by side so that your boasting will be in the fact that you are connected to Him. You will struggle through life if you try to figure out everything on your own. Instead, recognize that God knows the way and is willing to guide you if you will humble yourself and ask Him. Just like you open your heart to a trusted friend for advice and companionship, you need to start opening yourself to the Lord. A friend may fail you, but God will never fail you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 11, Jesus taught us to pray, Give us today our daily bread. This isn't just about physical nourishment. It's a reminder to seek God's daily provision, like asking Him, Lord, what's your plan for today? Or, Lord, what direction should I take today? Or, Father, provide me with only those things that will make my life better and keep me from anything that will be a danger to me. Imagine if you were letting someone else drive while you just ride. God wants to be your guide, to take the driver's seat and have complete control over your life. It's like saying, God, you know better than I do, so please lead the way. And when God takes the lead, you have a guaranteed future waiting for you, and the Bible calls that future hope. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Instead of planning everything yourself and hoping God approves, it is wiser to seek His direction first. Remember, God has all the answers. And when He guides you, it distinguishes you from your peers because you've got an insight and clarity for the day or for your next step. Let's take one more biblical example who sought God and got divine direction. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David, not yet the king of Israel, faced a dire situation when the Amalekites raided his city, Ziklag, and took his family and his friends' families captive. In anguish, David turned to the Lord for guidance, asking whether he should pursue the raiders and if he would succeed in overtaking them. Take a moment to let this sink in. Who would be the first person you called on if you were David? What would be your first response to the situation? I don't know how I would personally respond, but David showed a great depth of faith in God to turn to him in such a predicament. The result confirmed why this was the best choice. It proves why you and I have to imitate him and make God our first choice for help in times of need. Powered by God, David and his men embarked on the daring pursuit of the Amalekite raiders. After a fierce battle, they rescued their loved ones and reclaimed all their stolen property. This critical moment showed that David had strong faith in God and always looked to him for help. It hinted that he would become a great leader of Israel, known for his close relationship with God and his skill in overcoming challenges through God's guidance. Have you ever considered that? While we have limitations, God has no limitations whatsoever. When you choose to seek Him every morning, it's like saying to the Lord, this is where I'm weak and I need your strength. I trust that you're changing me every day and I won't waste a day worrying about what I did wrong yesterday. Instead, I rely on you to strengthen me in my areas of weakness. Our weaknesses don't have to define us if we learn how to let God fill our weaknesses with power. Often, we dwell too much on what we can't do and we forget to be excited about what God can do through us. 
This makes me excited every time I think about it. Regardless of what we can accomplish, God can. Yes, He absolutely can. And it's important to remember that miracles don't come from dwelling on our limitations. They come from believing in what God can do. So, we receive what we genuinely believe. Let's choose to believe in God's boundless strength and power as we seek Him every morning. When we make seeking God a daily practice, we acknowledge our limitations and affirm our faith in His limitless ability to transform our weaknesses into strengths and lead us toward a life filled with miracles and possibilities. This morning and every other morning, you have a fresh opportunity to align your heart with God's heart, knowing that His strength is more significant than your limitations and His guidance can lead you to accomplish what you never thought possible. What is the biggest thing you want to reach in your life right now? God can make it happen and go beyond your expectations. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. This is the God we serve. Now, what does seeking God daily look like in practical terms? It might involve praying, studying the Bible, or having quiet time with God. The key is consistency. One practical approach is to start your day with gratitude. Take a few moments each morning to thank God for the gift of a new day and His presence in your life. Express your appreciation for His guidance and strength. Another aspect of seeking God daily is aligning your goals and decisions with His will. Ask for His wisdom in making decisions, both big and small. Seek His guidance in your relationships, career, and daily interactions. That will save you a lot of trouble. Consider what the Bible mentions in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 9. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. This verse beautifully captures the idea of yearning for God at all times. It emphasizes the spiritual hunger and thirst for a deeper relationship with God. The act of seeking God in the morning expresses this longing for His presence and guidance. As we consistently seek God daily, we can expect to see several fruits in our lives. One of the most significant is a growing sense of inner peace. Knowing that we are not alone in our journey and God is with us can bring a profound sense of calm and assurance. Seeking God every day can also lead to greater wisdom. When we seek God's guidance in our decisions, we tap into a source of wisdom that surpasses our understanding. This can help us make decisions aligned with our values and lead to positive outcomes. Seeking the Lord also can bring about a sense of purpose. As we align our lives with God's will, we begin to see how our unique gifts and talents can be used to positively impact the world. The sense of purpose can be deeply fulfilling. While seeking God daily is transformative, it doesn't mean life will be free from challenges. In fact, it's often in the midst of challenges that our faith and reliance on God are tested and strengthened. When difficulties arise, praying to God and seeking His guidance can provide us with the strength and resilience needed to face adversity. They remind us that we are not alone in our struggles and that God is a source of comfort and support. In conclusion, seeking God daily is a practice that holds profound significance for our lives. It allows us to shift our focus from our limitations to God's limitless power. It transforms us from within, helping us to approach each day with purpose and confidence. As we seek God daily, we are reminded of our dependence on His strength and wisdom. We position ourselves as vessels through which His power can flow. We experience inner peace, wisdom, and a sense of purpose. Seeking God daily is not a guarantee that life will be free from challenges. Still, it equips us to face adversity with faith and resilience. It's a practice that invites the presence of the Lord into our daily lives and sets the tone for a life filled with purpose and meaning. I hope that you have made a resolution to seek the face of your Creator before anything or anyone. There have been numerous occasions that I've encountered things and it felt like a message was being conveyed to me or that God was prompting me to do something at that precise moment. I want to explain the real reason why you should take these nighttime awakenings seriously, whether it's at 3 a.m. or any other time. 
I urge you to pay close attention because there's a deeper meaning to it. Before we embark on this enlightening journey, let's remember this fundamental truth. The world around us is not solely a product of chance. There's a spiritual dimension to everything we encounter. Whether it's the success we achieve or the challenges we face, spiritual forces are often at play, orchestrating events in ways we may not fully comprehend. So, when you find yourself repeatedly awakening during the stillness of the night, whether it's at 1 a.m. or the mysterious hour of 3 a.m., there is undoubtedly a profound spiritual significance behind it. It's time to unveil the reasons that lurk in the shadows, to understand what this mystical awakening truly means. Now, you may be wondering, what could possibly be happening at 3 a.m.? To shed light on this, let me share a parable a story that beautifully illustrates why delving into the spiritual realm is not only essential, but transformative. Once upon a time in a quiet village, there lived a diligent gardener named Sarah. Sarah possessed an uncanny ability to make her garden bloom like no other. Her flowers were vibrant, her trees bore the juiciest fruits, and her vegetables were the envy of the entire village. One moonless night, Sarah awoke suddenly, her heart racing. It was 3 a.m. and the world was cloaked in darkness. Rather than ignoring the strange awakening, she followed her instincts. Armed with a lantern, she ventured into the garden, guided by an inexplicable force. As she wandered through her garden, Sarah discovered something extraordinary. Her beloved plants, usually asleep at this hour, were bathed in a soft, ethereal glow. It was as if the heavens themselves were tending to her garden. She watched in awe as her flowers unfurled their petals. Her trees rustled with newfound life, and her vegetables glistened with radiant aura. In that moment, Sarah realized the profound truth. At 3 a.m., a sacred connection between heaven and earth unfurled. It was a time when the veil between the physical and the spiritual world grew thin, allowing heavenly blessings to descend upon the receptive. Just like Sarah's garden, your nighttime awakenings at 3 a.m. are an opportunity for divine intervention. It's when God wakes you up to converse with your soul, to infuse you with wisdom, and to guide you on a path. It's a call to prayer a chance to seek His presence and receive the spiritual nourishment your soul craves. In these sacred moments, embrace the silence and listen to the whispers of your heart. Let the stillness of the night be your sanctuary, a place where you can commune with the divine. Embrace the wakefulness as a gift, for it's during these hours that your spirit is most receptive to God's guidance. Now, when you pray to God, you're conversing with the Creator of the universe the great I am. Doesn't it make sense that you too should make a sacrifice when you enter His presence? Waking up at 3 a.m. to pray is your way of saying, Lord, I value being in Your presence more than my slumber. I am devoted to You, committed to our relationship. It's a tangible act of love and commitment. At 3 a.m., the entire world is in a state of deep slumber and even the spiritual realm rests in quietude. This is the hour when you can effortlessly connect with the Spirit of God. Your worship ascends to His altar like a fragrant offering, unhindered by the distractions of the waking world or the influence of evil spirits. Moreover, 3 a.m. is a time when you find yourself alone with God. It's during these hours of stillness that you can hear His still small voice with unparalleled clarity. Your prayers and worship during this sacred time will cause your spiritual life to flourish. You'll dive deeper into a profound relationship with God, knowing Him more intimately than ever before. And here's the beautiful part. God loves it. He's not just waiting for you to wake up. He's eagerly anticipating your arrival, even before you open your eyes. No need for an alarm clock because He will wake you up with His gentle touch and loving presence. It's an exquisite experience that will fill your heart with warmth and peace. 
In the stillness of 3 a.m., you'll discover a connection with God that transcends the ordinary. It's a time for your soul to commune with the divine, for your spirit to soar in His presence. So the next time you find yourself awakened at 3 a.m., know that it's an invitation from the Almighty Himself. Embrace it as a gift, an opportunity to draw nearer to the one who loves you beyond measure. You see, my dear friends, as a young Christian warrior, I too was awakened in the depths of night. I was compelled to discern the Spirit's movements, to seek divine direction with a fervent heart. And lo and behold, in that hushed embrace of night, an enlightenment descended upon me like a gentle breeze from the Almighty Himself. It was as if God had switched on a celestial spotlight, illuminating the path before me. His instructions were clear, and I embraced them with the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why am I sharing this, you ask? Because I want you to understand that these nocturnal awakenings are not mere coincidences. They're the divine appointments, a divine rendezvous between you and your Creator, when the world slumbers and the night is still, God chooses this time to communicate with you, to impart His wisdom, His guidance, and His love. It's His way of saying, My child, I have something important to share with you. You may be tempted to dismiss these moments as fleeting, insignificant interruptions to your sleep. But my dear brothers and sisters, heed this warning. Ignoring these divine stirrings, could rob you of your destiny. These awakenings are not meant to be ignored or brushed aside. They're meant to be embraced, cherished, and acted upon. In the silence of those early morning hours, the Spirit yearns to speak to you. It longs to share insights that can transform your life, bless your family, and elevate your purpose. These awakenings are not random. They are divine invitations to embark on a journey of spiritual discovery and growth. The Bible reminds us in Proverbs 3, 5-6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. When you wake up at 3 a.m., trust that God is aligning your path, straightening the course of your life, and guiding you towards His divine purpose. At times, the sinister forces of darkness may be at work, trying to cast shadows over your life, attempting to thwart your progress or inflict you with afflictions. But remember, God is your ultimate guardian, your heavenly Father who yearns for your well-being. He awakens you to say, My child, it's time to pray. Engage in spiritual warfare. The battles you face are not mere coincidences. Counter the enemy's designs and embrace your divine destiny. God's love for you is profound. When He stirs you from slumber, it's an act of love to shield you from the schemes of Satan. Moreover, those moments of sudden awakening may be God's way of inviting you to worship Him, to converse with Him, or to encounter Him on a deeper level. Think of it this way. Imagine you're a parent with two children one child only comes to you in times of need or trouble, while the other seeks your presence out of love and longing. Which child's affection do you cherish more deeply? God desires that intimate connection with you, where you seek Him not only in desperation, but out of genuine love and devotion. The stillness of the night is a canvas where your faith can shine the brightest. In those sacred hours, you have the opportunity to deepen your bond with the Creator to gain clarity on your life's purpose, and to stand resilient against the adversities that seek to undermine your faith. You see, at 3 p.m. on that fateful Good Friday, Christ offered Himself as a sacrifice for our sins. In the grand design of the universe, the devil often seeks to twist what God has ordained, and so he chooses the opposite time, 3 a.m., to orchestrate his misdeeds. But God's faithful, they rise at this hour, not out of fear, but out of love. To them, it's not just a prayer. It's a profound connection with the divine. It's a way to say, Lord, I love you, even in the stillness of the night. They view it as a penance, 
a beautiful sacrifice to show their unwavering devotion. It's a demonstration that even when the world sleeps, their hearts are wide awake in worship. Imagine the world at 3 a.m. The streets are silent. The world dreams. And even the spiritual realm rests. It's a moment when distractions fade away, leaving only you and the Lord. In this sacred solitude, you can hear His voice more clearly, feel His presence more profoundly. Now, let's talk about the Passio Domini, the meditation of Christ's Passion. This powerful practice takes place between Thursday night and Friday afternoon, where souls meditate on every agony, every suffering Christ endured, from His agonizing prayers in Gethsemane to His last breath on the cross. Some choose to stay awake all night, immersed in prayer and contemplation. By waking up at 3 a.m., they're saying, Lord, I want to walk beside you on the path of your suffering. I want to understand the depth of your love for me. And as they pray, they often turn to the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that encompasses their daily needs, their aspirations, and their devotion. It's a prayer that reminds them of God's eternal glory and His infinite power. As they recite, Our Father in Heaven, they're affirming their connection to the Almighty. You see, waking up at 3 a.m. to pray is a gesture of love. It's a commitment to seek God when the world is still silent, when distractions are minimal. It's a declaration that your relationship with the Divine transcends the need for sleep. So, my friends, if you find yourself stirred from slumber at this sacred hour, know that you're not alone. You're a part of a communion that spans time and space, a fellowship of souls who understand the profound beauty of waking up at 3 a.m. to be with God. May this revelation ignite a spark within you. Embrace this divine rendezvous and let it fill your heart with love, hope, and unwavering faith. For this is why God wakes you up at night at 3 a.m., to draw you closer to Him, to bless you with His presence, and to remind you that you are truly loved. I want you to know that you're not here by chance. The Holy Spirit has guided you to this very moment because He has a message for you. That message is simple yet powerful. You can trust Him. Please know that this comes straight from my heart to yours. I understand that life can be overwhelming with its ups and downs, financial struggles, unfulfilled dreams, and the weight of your goals taking longer than expected. But let me assure you, as someone who's personally witnessed God's faithfulness, you can trust Him. He never fails, and He will never let you down if you place your trust in Him. In Isaiah 57, 13, the latter part of the verse says, But whoever takes refuge in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. There's something truly remarkable about finding refuge in the Lord and putting our trust in Him. Allow me to share a recent testimony with you. I believe that there's someone out there who needs to hear about God's faithfulness to reignite their faith and to stand strong once again. I hope and pray that that person is you, my dear friend. There is a prayer for you at the end of this message. I want you to watch until the end so you can claim the blessings in that prayer. It'll bring healing, hope, and grace to your life. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, let me share an incredible story that happened to me. About a year ago, during an annual program at my church fellowship, they asked everyone to write down their heart's desires. They believed that we would come back with testimonies the following year. I wrote down my request, even though I was feeling lost and had almost given up hope. But deep inside, I still clung to faith, believing that God would come to my aid. Now, fast forward a few weeks ago when I was praying about a current project I was working on. The Holy Spirit directed my heart to a note from that meeting last year. As I flipped through the pages, I couldn't believe my eyes. The project I was working on, the very thing I was trusting God to help me complete, was the answer to that prayer from last year. It was mind-blowing and humbling at the same time. But little did I know 
that the miracle had only just begun. As the project progressed, I found myself in need of a new home before a deadline. If I didn't meet that deadline, it would have been quite embarrassing for me. I was at my breaking point, and once again, I turned to the Lord for help. I received a message to come check out a small apartment that fit my budget. Even though I wasn't thrilled about the size or location, I was willing to settle for it just to save face. But when I saw the place, something unexpected happened. The agent in charge of the property told me he had something bigger and better at a cheaper price. I was taken aback because it wasn't something I was expecting from him. After all, property agents often prioritize their commissions, so referring me to a bigger property where he would make less money didn't make sense. But he told me he could see God's grace upon me and was certain that I was in the place God wanted me to be. I still couldn't wrap my mind around it because the property was not only bigger than I had expected, but also more than I needed where I currently am in life. It felt like getting a property meant for a large family. But then I thought, what if this was God's plan for me? Who was I to say no? So I went to check out the property, and the moment I laid eyes on it, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace and joy. I knew deep down that this was God's gift to me. And here's the amazing part. I was given the property on my own terms. I could pay on my own terms and move in on my own terms. It was as if the property had been specifically reserved for me. Friends, this experience taught me something profound. It reminded me that God's plans for us are often bigger and better than we can imagine. Sometimes we may feel undeserving or unsure, but if we trust in Him, He'll lead us to the right path and provide beyond our expectations. So, my encouragement to you is to keep trusting God, even when things seem impossible or when you feel like giving up. He is faithful, and His ways are higher than ours. You never know what miracles await you just around the corner. When I returned home, I was still completely awestruck trying to make sense of everything that just occurred. And in that moment, a verse from the book of Ephesians came rushing to my mind. It's Ephesians 3.20, and it says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. I couldn't help but realize that the blessing I'd received was beyond anything I could have asked for or even imagined. God had gone above and beyond what I had anticipated. That's why I can confidently say that you didn't stumble upon this video by mistake. The Holy Spirit is sending you this message to remind you to hold on to not let go of your faith. I always say, if you have strength for one more step, take it. It's a reminder that even when we feel like we can't go any further, when we're at our lowest point, we need to keep moving forward. And that's exactly what I want to encourage you to do, my brother and sister. Don't look back, but press on. For there is so much waiting for you if you can dare to trust the Lord with the challenges you're facing right now. Let's take a moment to imagine what would have happened if the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, had given up and surrendered when they felt God wasn't coming through for them. You might remember their story in the book of Daniel. The king had ordered that a fiery furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual, and the boys were thrown into it because they refused to bow down to the king's golden image. Now think about this. Sometimes it's easier to trust God when there's no deadline or when the deadline still seems far away. But what if the fires are close? What if the situation is pressing in on us? Can we still keep trusting Him? The Hebrew boys faced that very dilemma. They were faced with the scorching flames, and it seemed like there was no way out. But their faith remained unshaken. They trusted God even when they were thrown into the furnace. They believed that God was able to save them, but even if He didn't, they were resolved to remain faithful. In that moment of absolute trust, God showed up in an unprecedented way. As the boys stood in the middle of the blazing fire, they were joined by a fourth figure, one who resembled a son of the gods. God himself came down to deliver them from harm. Imagine the awe and wonder that must have filled their hearts as they witnessed this miraculous intervention. Not a single hair on their heads was singed, and their clothes were untouched by the flames. God had not only saved them, 
but he also had displayed his power in a way that surpassed all expectations. So, dear friend, as we bring this story back to our current discussion, I want to remind you once again to keep holding on to your faith. Just as I experienced a blessing that exceeded my wildest dreams, I want you to know that God is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. Trust Him with that issue you're facing, even if it feels like the odds are against you or if the situation seems impossible. Remember the three Hebrew boys and their unwavering trust. Trust God, even when it seems like all hope is lost. Keep moving forward, my brother, my sister, for there is a future filled with blessings that await you. Don't let go of your faith and let God's power work within you to accomplish far more than you can ever imagine. Now, I invite you to join me in this prayer of faith. Make sure that your heart is open to receive God's blessings. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts, thanking you for your unwavering love and remembrance. Even when we feel forgotten, you never forsake us. Your faithfulness is beyond measure, and we are grateful for your constant presence in our lives. Father, we humbly ask for your forgiveness for the times when we've allowed challenges and crises to overwhelm us, causing us to lose faith in you. Help us to remember that even in the midst of difficulties, you are still working in the background. Grant us the grace to trust you wholeheartedly and to never give up on you. Lord, we pray for the restoration of our faith. Renew our spirits and fill us with your grace. Open our eyes to see what you're doing in the background, even when we cannot perceive it. Give us the faith to trust in you, knowing that your plans for us are far greater than we can imagine. We lift up everyone who is trusting you for a miracle. Lord, just as you showed up for me, I ask that you manifest your power in their lives as well. Perform unprecedented miracles, even in situations where all hope seems lost. Your word tells us of the story of Lazarus, who was dead for four days. But when the Lord Jesus showed up, he commanded the stone to be rolled away, showing that man's conclusion is not your conclusion. You raised Lazarus back to life to prove your dominion over death and the grave. Father, in this same faith, we ask that you bring forth miracles that defy human understanding. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of fear and depression. Your word assures us that with joy, we will draw water from the wells of salvation. Therefore, Lord, we ask that you fill our hearts with your joy, which surpasses all understanding. May your joy be our strength, empowering us to overcome every obstacle that comes our way. Father, we present before you the specific needs of each individual. We pray for healing, deliverance, and divine intervention in our lives our finances, our businesses, our careers, and our ministries. May your healing touch be upon those in need, and may your divine intervention restore what's been lost, whether it be relationships, opportunities, grace, or health. We declare our trust in your power to bring restoration and redemption to every aspect of our lives, Lord. I declare in faith that just as you showed consistency in keeping me and every member of our team and community going, you will consistently guide all of us and manifest your blessings in our lives. May our hearts overflow with gratitude for the miracles, both seen and unseen, that you're working on on our behalf. We offer this prayer in alignment with your promises, and we trust that you're able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to your power at work within us. Father, your promises are steadfast, and your grace is abundant. We rely on your unfailing love and guidance as we navigate through life, now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.